All right, folks, this is the Retivas HS4. It's a 10 meter radio, and we've done a couple of videos on this so far. We did one where we modified it so it can transmit on 10 meters and 12 meters. I'll have that link below where you can search for it. It'll be awful easy to find. And I did another video where I test the out of band harmonics and spurious submissions of this radio, and it came back very, very clean. And uh, I'm pretty happy about that. This is actually turning out to be a fantastic radio. In today's video, what we're going to do is we are going to test the power output of this at various voltages to make sure that it complies with the vendor's stated claims. Now, speaking of the vendor, it is from somebody called Redivis. They contacted me and asked if I would do a video review of this radio, and I agreed because I like radios and I like to do video reviews. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. Okay, now that that part's done, I am going to show you the claims that the vendor makes, and I'm going to show you the equipment that we're going to use, and then we're going to do some testing, so stay tuned. All right, we're not going to spend too much time digging around this product page. This is the Retivas HS1 10 meter with antenna. I believe it's a little bit cheaper if you buy the packet, if you buy the non-package deal without the antenna. But what I wanted to do is come down here and take a quick look at the specifications on this. And I have a link to this, and you can check it out in more detail below. But the reason I want to take a look at this is input voltage right here. It says 13.8 normal, 15.9 max, and 11.7 minimum. And then it says transmit AM full mod. I'm assuming that means full uh, mode. 6 amps receiver squelch. Da, 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 da. So anyhow, what it's saying is, is that this can run on any of these voltages. And then down here for power output, what it's saying is, is that here are the power outputs. AM and CW is 1 to 12, FM is 1 to 40, upper and side, upper and lower sideband is 1 to 35 adjustable. So what we're going to do today is we are going to test that against all three of these voltage levels and see what happens. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the equipment that we're going to use to pull this test off. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is the power supply, the MFJ4230 DMP. And I do have a video on that if you wanted to check it out. Maybe I'll put a link below or maybe you just search for the Smoke and Ape MFJ4230 DMP. But uh, the reason I use this is it actually has a digital display and it has this variable adjustment knob here, which makes setting it to specific voltages very easy because we want to substantiate vendor claims at output wattage at certain input voltages, this is a good meter for the, um, the good power supply for that job. Uh, to measure our output in watts, we're actually going to use a really nice, um, it's called a digital vector RF watt meter, but basically it's a power and SWR meter. It is the LP100A by Telepost. So this is the display box that I have here. And in the back, this is something called a directional coupler. And this directional coupler has it. You can see a current sampling and a voltage sampling that it pulls off of the signal that trans, uh, transmits through this. Let's take a more detailed look at how we're going to have this stuff configured. My desk is a mess right now. This is what happens when you actually test RF equipment versus unbox it and post affiliate links. So anyhow, when you take a look at this, over here on the right-hand side, we have a stack, and that is the power supply sitting on top of the LP100. If you notice, I have these plugged in incorrectly, my uh, power poles. So I had them plugged in correctly, and then uh, well, I had one of them plugged in correctly, and I couldn't fit both of them on there because of the boots. So the power pole outlets on this thing are too close together, so I had to yank the boots. And when I did that, I incorrectly plugged this power pole back in. Fortunately for me, the device was smart enough when I turned it on to detect a fault, and I was able to correct that situation, and we were in business. So from the device on the bottom, we have two B and C cables that come out and roll up together, and they go into this directional coupler, and we just talk about that. Uh, you can see that there's a coaxial cable coming out of the stereo, coming out of the radio uh, that comes in and plugs into the transmitter side. The load side comes out and plugs into this dummy load, and we should be good right there. Both the radio and the LP100 have power cables. They are the ones that come in here and plug in through these Anderson power pole connections. So it's a big tangled web of stuff, ain't it? Okay, here we are set up, and it's a little bit of a mess in here, but that's going to be okay. Anyhow, we have the radio on, and uh, let me get back down here. We are starting off in the 12 meter band and we are 24.94 megahertz and we are an upper side band. And if you look over here, hopefully you can see it. We have the power supply set to 11.7 volts, which is the lowest voltage that they had uh, recommended for this radio. 
you take a look over here, we have our RF power, which is the outside all the way up. So we're, we're knobs to the right all the way up and we're going to see what happens there. Test, 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 test. 31.5 watts. That's not too bad. Let's go ahead and we're going to go test this baby in AM. Now when we key this up, we are going to get a carrier and we don't need to speak into it. And you see we're at around 10.33 watts. Hello. And well, that went all the way up to 30. Let's take a look at uh, FM and see what we have here. And yeah, coming out of the gate at 32.8 watts. If I talk in there, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. All right, there we go at 11.7 volts. Let's jump this up to 13 and see what we get. All right, 13.7 is as close to 13.8 as we're going to get it with that janky knob. Let's go back to upper sideband and see what we get. Test, 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 test. 47.7 watts. Hot damn. Right, here we are on AM. Dead key gives us about 10.3. Now it's up to 11, close to what it was before. Let me talk into this baby. Hello, hello. 51.7. Let's go over to FM, see what we get here. 38.7 and nothing happens when I talk into it. Okay, let's see if this baby goes up to 15.9. Uh-oh, see so we just got a high voltage warning. DC high at 15.9, which is what it says we're not going to do it. So we're just not going to test at 15.9. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch this baby all the way over to the 10 meter band. And I think I need to go around 38. Yeah, that's about right. Somewhere smack in the middle of 10 meters. So let's go over to upper side band. Let's drop this back down to 11.7, I think is where we were testing. <laughs> Upper side band, key it up. And when I talk into this, when I talk into this. So we get 31.8, which is pretty dang on good. Let's drop it down to AM. We are right around 11. Once I start talking, it goes up. And now I'm talking right into that microphone. Hot damn. And we got 34.4. And then when we go over to FM, we key up. We get 33.6. Talking into the microphone directly doesn't do a thing for us. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this up to 13.8 like we did before, and we're going to run through the same test and see what happens. All right, we're going to go over to upper side band. Key up, we get nothing. And when I talk like this, what do we get? We get 47.9. All right, let's go over to AM. We get about 11.2 keyed up. And then when I talk in there, when I talk in there, we're at 50.7. And let's go over to AM. Key up, we get our 38.9. Talking in there gets us nothing. All right, folks. Well, that's going to show you that the power uh, does put out as advertised. All right, let's take a little bit more in depth at the data that we got on the upper left hand side. Here's our data table. And then here is the ratings that came from the product documentation. And again, it says uh, AMCW 1 through 12 watts. Well, we were much higher than that. Uh, FM, it says 1 through 40 watts. I don't think we ever hit 40 watts on FM. Came close. Uh, upper and lower sideband, 1 to 35 watts, and we went way past that. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. Down here, the patterns look the same, both for 10 and 12 meters. The measurements are really, really close. Uh, what you see a bigger difference in is, is the amount of input voltage that you have. Again, they recommended uh, up to upper limit of 15.9. And when we set the power supply to that, it was saying that we were had a DC high voltage condition. So we didn't even test that on the radio. I didn't want to risk damage in the radio. So we only tested the 11 and the 13.8, 11.7 to 13.8. And I would say that these results are fantastic. Really happy with it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I will do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching, and thanks to Retivas for sending this radio to me for my consideration.